Continuing our discussion on root solving, we'll next talk about open methods. So again, we are motivated to try to find a, an additional set of tools that we can use to find the roots of certain functions that we're interested in. And the open method can be used without a bounding interval, and it actually may converge quicker than some of the bracketed methods that we've previously looked at. So the advantages here are that if it does converge, the rate of convergence is typically much higher than a bracketed method and it may only require a single initial guess depending on the method that we're going to choose. The disadvantages are that the method may diverge and we also may need the first derivative of the function for the particular method we're using. Divergent behavior for those unfamiliar, if the method is diverging the approximations keep getting further and further from the actual root. So in this depiction down here if we're currently at this blue dot and our method sends us way off to the left here. We're going further and further from the root that we're actually seeking, and so we may never get back to this actual root, and that would be considered divergent behavior. The method that we're going to be talking about is the newton raphson method. This is one of the most popular open methods. So a graphical depiction here, we have some initial value xi. Here's the function at xi. We need to know the derivative as well. So that's the slope through this function point. That's the derivative of f. So using those bits of information, what we're looking for is where the function derivative passing through the function, which is this dashed black line, crosses the x-axis. And that's what we're going to use as our newest approximation for the root. And we'll call that xi plus 1. So we can use the method of triangles here and compute the slope, which is the derivative, and by doing some basic manipulation we can come up with a newton raphson formula that says that our new approximation of the root is equal to the old approximation minus the function at the old divided by the function derivative at the old. So with a current guess and the function at the current guess and the derivative at the current guess we can get a new approximation. So as I said this is one of the most widely used methods in numerical methods and when it does converge, it does so in a quadratic nature, which is much quicker than the linear convergence of something like the bisection method. So the steps are pretty straightforward. The first step is just to pick an initial estimate of the root. We'll call that x naught. Step two is to update your approximation of the root using the newton raphson formula. So the general formula over here says that your next approximation, x subscript i plus 1, so iteration i plus 1, is equal to x at iteration i minus the function at x at iteration i over the derivative of the function at iteration i. So we use knowledge of the function and the derivative in our previous guess to get an update of our new guess. So for our first root here, we take the initial guess, subtract the function at the initial guess over the derivative and get a new updated value. Then we can check convergence by comparing the error between iteration 1 and our initial guess and then we would repeat steps two through three until we reach a converged solution. So let's look at a quick example here. Again, we'll study this function, f of x equals 1.5 x squared minus 10 plus 1 half e to the negative x over 2 and a half. So here's the exponential term, which limits us from using the quadratic formula. So we want to find the roots of the equation, starting with an initial value of three, and using a convergence criteria of 0.1%. So to use the newton raphson method, we need the derivative. So to take the derivative, we would differentiate f with respect to x, and we would get 3x minus 0.2e to the negative x over 2.5. So iteration one, we have our approximation, x equals three. We plug that into our function and our derivative. So the function is 3.65, the derivative is 8.94. So we can find the newest approximation using the newton raphson formula. So we plug in all of our numbers, 3 minus the function over the derivative, and we get an updated value of 2.592. So we had 3, now we're at 2.592. So we can check the convergence using the approximate relative error. So the current estimate minus the old estimate divided by the current gives us an error of 15.76 percent. So that is not below the 0.1 percent threshold so we would continue with iteration 2. So we take our x from iteration 1 which was 2.592, plug it into our function and our derivative, use the newton raphson formula here, and so we would get x2 
by setting it equal to x1 minus the function at x1 divided by the derivative at x1. So 2.592 minus the function at 2.592 divided by the derivative at 2.592. And we go from 2.592 to 2.559. So we're getting much closer. So we can check the convergence. So 2.559 minus 2.592 divided by 2.559, absolute value times 100, we're down to 1.29% error. So much better and we're converging much quicker on the actual root. So we have an error of 1.26%. So we take that value, 2.5587, the function is actually zero out to four decimal places and then the function derivative is 7.6042. So our new guess is actually the same as our old guess uh, with some rounding error here. Uh, but our approximate relative error is 0.01%, so far below 0.1%. So the answer is actually 2.5587, and that's accurate to 0.1% relative error using the Newton-Raphson method.